Ah, yes. I um, just delivered or facilitated the workshop on meditation and addictions and working with the marginalised. And it was a good, lively session. Uh, I think it went well. People around the room uh, all shared, contributed. Everybody had something to say, and some people within the group shared that they had their own addiction problems. Um, one or two follow a 12 step um, program, for instance, and as we know, uh, Lawrence has done a lot of work on promoting uh, uh, building a bridge with WCCM and the 12 step movement because the 11th step is about communicating with your higher power through the medium of meditation. Now in my experience, a lot of people who attend 12 step groups might read that 11th step but don't know how to meditate. So I think it's important that uh, the WCCM um, has got an important role to play in teaching people how to meditate. Um, very important. The, the, the discussion, if you like, broadened beyond the 12 steps because uh, there are a lot of people who I work with back in Middlesbrough in the UK um, who struggle with the concept of a higher power or this, this God thing, you know, uh, so wouldn't go to a 12 step program because of that and yet still attend our Christian meditation sessions. And I think why that is, is that we don't kind of, within the, the session, within the meditation session, it's not a hard sell. You know, we don't try and push, you know, this is it, this is the answer. You know, it's a come, come and see, taste for yourself. And if it works for you, great, but give it a go. Um, so we talked about that and, and we talked about the, the kind of, um, the need to stay focused, if you like, as, as people, as individuals who might work with people with addiction problems, not to get lost in their world, but rather to believe in that individual, believe that healing is possible, that recovery is possible, and don't judge that person, have compassion, have empathy, and a non-judgmental attitude and treat that person with respect and dignity because in society often that person is stigmatized, is marginalized um, and in my belief if a person's got a very low sense of worth, no self-esteem then that individual's going to make really poor life choices because they don't feel valued, they don't feel, oh, what's the point, it's only me. You know, and there'll be a lot of abuse. Also, if, if we try to lift that individual, um, if a person hasn't done any inner healing, then that person invariably will self-sabotage and will, in some way, throw back any good that potentially is coming into that person's life. I think when we meditate and when we instill that discipline of meditation, it's an antidote also to this sense of self-gratification, you know, this, I want it all and I want it now, you know, gimme, 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 an instant fix. Whereas the wisdom of meditation and mystical spiritual practices teaches patient, persistent practice reaps the greatest rewards but it is a discipline, it doesn't come overnight and when people are so used to changing their mindset with a drink or a drug, you know, meditation might not necessarily get in there instantly, however it does provide an anchor in a otherwise chaotic lifestyle. So often people will know that no matter what's going on in that individual's life, every Wednesday morning, for instance, the meditation, oh, you know, I can come and I, I know I'll be respected, I'll be valued, I can let everything go, I can just be, I can be myself, no one's judging me here, I can just sit, we all close our eyes, we're all equal. And I think that's very important. And we were talking about things such as this in the workshop 
and the sense, the importance of dignity with an individual who is stigmatized and if any of us can do any kind of healing work with people, it's just like Jesus, you know, you wouldn't see a gammy faced leper or a prostitute as society might see them, he would see the child of God beyond the outer appearance and that child of God is still there beyond you know somebody who's off the faces on drink or drugs there is a person inside and I think if we can just treat that person with respect with dignity and at the very least plant that seed that that person is valued without necessarily coming across all you know born again Christian here he's the answer read this book you know, I don't think we have to go to those extremes. We can treat with love and respect that individual. And if we can teach that person meditation, we're giving them a way out. You know, um, and there is a big recovery agenda going on in the UK now. We talked about that today also. So it was a very lively um, interactive session and, and the feedback was good at the end. Thank you.